Kitty, and this podcast is mine, Missing, Murdered, Unidentified in New England. I cover cases from the New England states of Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Each episode takes place over the month of each year between January 1st, 2010 and December 31st, 2020. And based on sources, some episodes will be long and others will be short as these cases don't generally have much information available. All of the research, scripting, opinions, and mistakes here are my own, and I will offer updates and corrections when possible. I do not offer trigger warnings for wounds as they are a necessary part of the narrative. I will trigger warn for such topics as suicide, animal death, domestic violence, etc. as needed. Now with that, please listen in as I tell you about July 2010. Anthony Smalls was a 40-year-old Dorchester, Massachusetts native. He was into music, He was a beloved dad of nine children between the ages of 8 to 20, a devoted husband to wife Lolita for over a decade, with three of their nine children together. Anthony Smalls was overall a wonderful person whose daughter Latifah said inspired kids to play sports. Anthony was also a DJ and a bartender at the Carver Den in Dorchester. Anthony's life came to a tragic end in the early morning hours of July 2nd, 2010. Cameras show Anthony walking home from a friend's house around 12.58 a.m. and being chased by two vehicles on foot. The vehicles are described as a dark-colored Dodge Durango SLT and a light-colored Honda Accord with a sunroof. The occupants of one or both vehicles proceeded to shoot Anthony multiple times outside of 4-6 to Melton Ave in Mattapan, where his body lay on the sidewalk undiscovered until a body shop opened at 6 a.m., Authorities are unsure if this was a random killing or a targeted attack. Anthony was only a few blocks away from home when he was found. In the aftermath of Anthony's shooting death, there was a candlelight vigil from his Dorchester home to his death scene in Mattapan. Jessica, one of Anthony's daughters, walked in a Mother's Day walk for peace in 2016 in honor of her slain dad. Gun violence isn't new to Anthony's family as his cousin, Kevin Smalls, was killed by gun violence in 1991 at the age of 21. Billboards, shirts, wristbands, magnets, and a $10,000 reward have yet to yield tips. It's been over 10 years. Someone has to know something. Be the voice of justice and call 1-617-343-6423. Our next case takes us to Hartford County, Connecticut, to July 7, 2010, where the unidentified remains of a person were discovered. There is no mention on what remains were found or not, and there is no determinant of age, sex, height, or weight. If you have any information, please call 1-860-679-3980. Like many of these cases, I couldn't find any information on the life of 33-year-old Angel Robles Rivera, only a glimpse into the final moments of his life. On the evening of July 9, 2010, at about 11.20 p.m., concerned neighbors phoned the police after hearing a fight coming from Angel's home at 275 Country Street in Fall River, Mass. Two men fled the scene in either a gray, dark gray, or silver SUV. The first suspect is described as 24 to 28, now 34 to 38, with a medium build. The second assailant is described as less than 24 years old, now less than 34 years old, and about 150 pounds with dark hair. Police found Angel with a gunshot wound to the head. If you or someone you know can help, please call 1-508-324-2796 or 1-508-324-2796. 508-672-TIPS. We again know little publicly about 23-year-old Robert Fleming. Like many victims, there is little to no coverage of Robert's life or death. Robert was the dad of a 3-year-old, now 15-year-old son. He was also known to police for unknown reasons, though it is known that Robert had gang affiliations. Just before 11 p.m. on July 20, 2010, Robert Fleming's world stopped. While standing on the corners of Adams and Robertson Streets in Dorchester, Mass., with a young woman, two men approached, 
one pulling out a handgun and shooting Robert point-blank in the chest. Both of these cowardly men ran to a parked car and drove away. As Robert lay mortally wounded, blood draining into the hot summer sidewalk sun, he called for the comfort of his mom with his dying breaths. This was all recounted from a witness across the street. Robert was taken to Boston Medical Center where he was pronounced dead. Please call 1-617-343-4470 or 1-800-494-TIPS. On July 25, 2010, a busy summer night in Roxbury, Mass., between 9.30 and 10 o'clock p.m. on MLK Boulevard, Kenny Rackley was shot in the back in front of a park packed with 150 to 200 people. And of those, only one brave person came forward as a witness to the crime. No arrests have been made. Kenny's grandma, Faye Rackley, wants people to come forward and ensure another person doesn't suffer from another death like she has. Faye is also part of Just In Time to bring together trauma survivors to inspire healing and processing grief. In one source, there is a lovely picture of a memorial to Kenny. Please speak up and call 1-800-494-TIPS or text TIPS to CRIME. I couldn't find much information on Lance Chalen Talbert other than he was 30 years old, shot repeatedly in the back in broad daylight at roughly 11.30 a.m. on July 28, 2010. Lance's demise came at the hands of an unknown shooter at Dayton and Clementine Park in Dorchester, Mass. He was pronounced deceased at the scene. Lance was found at Shawmut Tea Stop. If this Lance Chalen Talbert is the same as Lance Talbert, also from Wendover Street, Dorchester, which I feel pretty confident in, then there is a criminal background that may have contributed to his murder. A. Lance Talbert was sentenced to 57 months for the shooting of Adelio de Rosa and conspiracy to commit murder of the Wendover Street Gang. He was convicted of Rico Conspiracy Count and Vicar Murder Conspiracy. These mean racketeering-influenced corruption organizations, like gangs, and Vicar is violent crime in the act of racketeering also known as the killing of others in retaliation to gang violence. If this is the same Lance, there is definite gang activity involved. If you or anyone you know can help solve this broad daylight murder, please call 1-617-343-6470, 1-800-494-TIPS, or text TIP to CRIME. If you have any questions, concerns, complaints, please email me at mindpodcast at gmail.com. All one word and mine is spelled with two M's, two I's, one N, one E. Please include what your message is about on the subject line. Later, y'all.